Okay, welcome to this tutorial where we'll be looking at the last part of this sequence of videos on show that questions for projectile motion. So let's have a look at this question. Two points A and B are five meters apart. The particle is projected from A towards B with initial velocity U sub one meters per second at an angle alpha to the horizontal simultaneously another particle is projected from B towards A with initial velocity U sub two meters per second at an angle beta to the horizontal. So this is a two part question where we are told that if the particles collide, show that U sub one sine alpha is equal to U sub two sine beta. And the next part asks us to show that T is equal to five over U sub one cosine alpha plus u sub two cosine beta. Now this question might seem a little bit difficult on face value, but I encourage you to have a go at the question using some of the concepts that we've learned in the previous tutorials. When you come back, I will show you the solution. Okay, so here we've just drawn a diagram which shows two points A and B which are five meters apart and two particles which have been projected from these points at the same time and towards each other, okay? For the sake of ease, the particle that's been projected from the point A, we'll call that particle A and the particle that's been projected from the point B, we'll call this particle B. Now, since we've been asked to prove equations which model the scenario where the particles collide well we've just simply illustrated a collision on the diagram okay since we've been given the initial velocities and the angles of projection of each respective particle we can add this to the diagram where we have particle a being projected with initial velocity of u sub one meters per second at an angle alpha to the horizontal and we have the particle be projected in the other direction with a speed of u sub two meters per second at an angle of beta to the horizontal. Now in mechanics questions, when there are two particles involved, you can choose to use two separate systems to describe each particle that's involved. However, in this example, I'm going to model the motion of each particle as part of one whole system. And this will become clearer to you once we split each of these vectors into two perpendicular components. Okay, so splitting the initial velocity vector into two components for the particle A, we get that the initial velocity in the horizontal direction is U sub one cosine alpha because it contains the angle and the initial velocity in the vertical direction is u sub one sine alpha because it doesn't contain the angle. You should be well familiar with this at this stage. Now by drawing and labeling the vectors in this way, we've kind of already made a choice as to which direction is going to be positive and negative. Since we've labeled this vector as u sub one cosine of alpha, and since u sub one is positive, well, it means that when we look at the horizontal motion, we're choosing rightwards to be positive. And when we look at the vertical motion, we're choosing upwards to be positive. Okay. Now, when we look at splitting the vector U sub two into two components, we get that the initial velocity in the horizontal direction would be negative U sub two cosine beta. Now we get this U sub two cosine beta because it's the vector that contains the angle but we also get a negative sign and that's because it's going in the other direction as the particle A in the same system, okay? The vertical component of initial velocity for this vector would be U sub two sine of beta. Since the vertical component of this vector is upwards and we've chosen upwards to be positive. So we can conclude that U sub two sine of beta is positive. So if you do choose to model particles as part of 
the same system, just be wary of the signs, okay? Now by inspecting the equations that we've been asked to prove, there is nowhere where the acceleration due to gravity appears. So you could probably choose any of the constants that you're used to working with, 9.81, 10, or G meters per second per second. I'm just going to use G meters per second per second as the acceleration acting downwards due to gravity, okay? Now, since in the question we are asked to look at the scenario where the particles collide, well, it makes sense to model the path of each particle specifically at the point where they collide, which we can call C, okay? So now we have a point in the path to model. What we're going to do is use these parametric equations that we discussed in the previous tutorial to describe the motion of each particle at the point C and use the certain conditions that must occur in order for particles to collide to prove these equations. Okay, so starting with part A, we've been asked to show that u sub 1 sine alpha is equal to u sub 2 sine beta. So seeing as we have sine alpha and sine beta in the equation we're trying to prove, and they are also components of the vertical initial velocity vectors for both particles, well, it makes sense to resolve the motion of each particle vertically at the point C, where we take upwards to be positive. Okay. Now we can describe the vertical motion of each particle A and B by subbing the vertical components of velocity into equation two, which is a general parametric equation for the vertical motion of a projectile. So subbing U sub one sine alpha into equation two, we can describe the motion of particle A using the equation Y sub one is equal to u sub 1 sine of alpha times t minus a half gt squared. And for the particle b, we can describe its motion using this equation. y sub 2 is equal to u sub 2 sine beta times t minus a half gt squared, which we get by subbing this part into equation 2. So we now have two equations of motion for each particle in the vertical direction. Now, in order for the particles A and B to collide at the point C, one of the conditions that needs to be satisfied is that at some point in time, both of the particles must have the same vertical displacement. In other words, the Y values of these equations must be equal for some value of T. And we can show this by the following equation, okay? By setting these two equations equal, here we have u sub one sine of alpha times big T, which we've used to represent the time at which the particles collide, minus a half gt squared is equal to u sub two sine beta times the same big T minus a half gt squared. Now we can simplify this equation by adding a half gt squared to both sides and giving us that u sub one sine of alpha times t is equal to u sub two sine of beta times t. And dividing both sides of the equation by t, we get that u sub one sine alpha is equal to u sub two sine beta as required. Okay. The next part of the question asks us to prove that t is equal to five over u sub one cosine alpha plus u sub two cosine beta. Now, if you inspect the equation, there are a couple of clues that really point towards resolving the motion of each particle horizontally this time. And one of the clues is that we can see cosine alpha and cosine beta, which are parts of the horizontal components of motion. And we can see a five here, which is the horizontal displacement between the initial points of projection, A and B. So let's resolve the motion of each particle horizontally at the point C where we take rightwards to be positive. So by substituting u sub one cosine alpha into equation one, we get that the equation of motion in the horizontal direction for the particle A is x sub one is equal to u sub one cosine alpha times t. Okay. 
Now, for the equation of motion for the particle B in the horizontal direction, which we've called x2, we have to be careful here. We get the first part of the equation by substituting this term, negative u sub 2 cosine beta, into the equation 1, giving us that the first part of the equation would be negative u sub 2 cosine beta times t. Now, whenever you're modeling two particles within the same system, you need to look at the horizontal displacement of any of the particles relative to one fixed point in the system. Now, if we choose our fixed point to be at the point A, the initial point of projection of particle A, then we should be able to take advantage of the fact that we know the horizontal displacement at the point B relative to the point A is five meters. So given that T is equal to zero at the point B, how do we make this equation equal to 5? Well, you guessed it, we simply just add 5. And rewriting the equation like this, 5 minus u sub 2 cosine beta t, does make it clearer to see that the maximum horizontal displacement of the particle in this particular system would be at most 5. Okay? Do take note that this method wasn't required for the vertical equations of motion for each particle and that's because in the vertical sense the particles both started from the same position with zero displacement. So now we have two equations of motion which describe each particle in the horizontal direction. The special condition that must be satisfied in order for particles A and B to collide is that for some point in time they must both have the same horizontal displacement. In other words, for some value of t, the x values of these equations must be equal if they collide. And we can represent this by setting both equations equal to each other, where we get u sub 1 cosine alpha times big T. Now, this t, of course, has to be the same as the t we used for the vertical motion. And this is equal to negative u sub 2 cosine beta times big T plus 5. If we add u sub 2 cosine beta T to both sides, we get that u sub 1 cosine alpha times T plus u sub 2 cosine beta times T is equal to 5. Taking a cursory glance at the equation we're trying to prove, well, we can see that we're almost there. What we need to do is simply just make t the subject of this equation. And we can do that since we can see a common factor of t in both terms on the left-hand side. So factorizing the left-hand side, we get the following, that t multiplied by u sub 1 cosine alpha plus u sub 2 cosine beta is equal to 5. To make t the subject, we divide both sides of the equation by this expression, giving us that t is equal to 5 over u sub 1 cosine alpha plus u sub 2 cosine beta, which is what we were looking to prove. Okay, so hope that was useful for you. Keep up the good work and I will see you soon. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.